just a little bit more of some of the muscles of the upper and lower limb. So look at this view right here. We looked at previously the pectoralis major muscle here, the large one up here in the chest or pectoral region. And this is one of the big strong muscles that operates on that humerus. Remember when it comes to this pectoralis major, it largely has its origin down your sternum, then over here on your humerus in that intertubicular groove. And what it's doing is pulling that humerus to the front. So you think about some type of action like a push-up pectoralis major muscles are some of the muscles being used. Here's your deltoid, what you think of as being right up here, sort of the top of your shoulder. Again, if you want to elevate your upper limb, like if you want to take your hand and put it above your head, that deltoid muscle lifts up on that humerus. Remember, there's a thick spot on that humerus called the deltoid tuberosity where that muscle has its insertion. But here's some of the other muscles of the upper limb, some of the large ones like the biceps brachii, which again is anterior to the front. You talk about bending at your elbow. It's a big power muscle being used at that time. Here's your triceps brachii to the back. Again, where that biceps brachii is a flexor that bends at your elbow, that triceps brachii does just the opposite. It's an antagonist that extends and straightens that upper limb out. In other words, sort of straighten at your elbow. And then right here found in between the two is the brachialis muscle, another flexor. Getting down here closer to your forearm is the brachioradialis, probably the largest of these muscles seen right here to the back side of your forearm, say to the back side of your hand. And that's what's called the extensors of the hand and wrist. Remember, the flexors are on the front palm side when you're in the anatomic position, and the extensors are to the back side. Flexors bend your fingers and wrist, where the extensors straighten them back out. But up here in your shoulder, you often hear about that rotator cuff, and people often aren't really sure what that is. That's a combination of many things. That's four muscles, six ligaments, and a cup of cartilage that holds the head of that humerus <coughs> into that glenoid cavity up there in that joint. Remember, that's a ball and socket joint in the shoulder. That's a very movable joint, so it's a little bit more prone to injury than what a lot of the others in the body are. But as you can see, there are a lot of structures make up that rotator cuff. But back down here again is our biceps brachii, triceps brachii. Right in between them right here is the brachialis. Don't confuse that with the brachioradialis, which again is down here closer to what you think of as your forearm. And there again are the extensors. They're shown to the back posterior side. So here's a view to the rear posterior side of the brachial region. Now again, biceps brachii is on the front, but your triceps brachii is to the back. And remember that tricep tells you there's three heads, three origins to that muscle, where there's the lateral head, which is to the outside, there's a medial head to the inside, and then a long head right in between them. So three different heads to that triceps brachii. Then again, when you get down here in your forearm, remember, when you think of as palm side, when you're in the anatomic position, that palm's forward. That's flexors, which are front anterior side, and again, extensors, posterior to the back. And again, the flexors bend your fingers and wrists where the extensors straighten them out. Now, something else you can see in this picture right here is something called the retinaculum. That is a band of collagen fibers and somewhat of a round circular orientation that holds all these mini tendons in place. If you look at all these flexors and extensors, that's a lot of tendons going out to your wrist and fingers. And if you ever have a severe cramp, say, in one of those flexors, you can actually see those tendons pop out. It gives what's called a bowstring effect, where it sort of pulls out like a bowstring does when you pull on it. But that retinaculum will keep them held down. It gives you more leverage and power with them whenever you use them. Now down here, the lower limb, here's your gluteus medius and maximus muscles. Again, the medius is a good place to get a shot. Since there aren't any nerves deep to this muscle, it's safe to put a needle there, but you don't want to be sticking a needle in this maximus. You might hit part of a nerve going down your lower limb and cause some damage to it. Getting down here to the front anterior part of the thyroid femoral region. Again, we got this big, powerful quadriceps femoris muscle group. Now remember in that quadriceps femoris muscle group, there's four muscles. Three of them have vastus in the name, and there's one with rectus. So there's a vastus medialis to the inside, vastus lateralis to the outside. 
And here's the rectus femoris in between them. You can't see that vastus intermedius because it's deep to it. It's underneath it. And then here's the patellar tendon just above your kneecap or, patin or patella kneecap there. And the patellar ligament just inferior to it. And then looking here to the inside, looking at some of these adductors. Remember, adduction. That's bringing body part towards the midline. These will be used when you bring your feet together. You can't see all of these, but a few of them you can, like the gracilis is this muscle to the very inside, long, thin muscle right here. You can see the adductor longus and also the adductor magnus, and there's that long sartorius crossing right there with them. Look into the rear posterior side of this femoral region. There's that hamstring muscle group. And again, you look at that hamstring muscle group, there's three muscles there. Now the biceps femoris is one of them. It's found lateral to the outside. And then there's two to the inside. Now notice the semimembranosus is the one that's medial and deep, where the semitendinosus is the one that's medial and superficial being on top. Then you get down to the leg or curl region. Here's your tibialis anterior it's to the front along the tibia. There's your extensor digitorum longus. Here's the fibularis longus, and below it here, the fibularis brevis. Here we have our soleus and gastrocnemius. Put those two together, and that's what you call your calf muscle. And there's another view of the gastrocnemius right there. 